the Diamond Sutra. Early in the morning when the mealtime came, he put on his robe, took his bowl, and walked into the city of Shravasti to beg for his food, going from house to house. When he had finished, he returned to the garden and took his meal. Then he put away his robe and bowl, washed his feet, and sat down. Then the monk was in the midst of the assembly, stood up, bared his right shoulder, kneeled on his right knee, clasped his hands together in reverence, and addressed the Buddha, how exquisitely considerate you are, sir, you are always concerned about the welfare of your students, and you are generous with your teaching, sir, when sincere men and women seek in should they do and how should they control their minds? The Buddha said an excellent question, Subhuti. If sincere men and women seek enlightenment, it is essential for them to control their minds. Listen and I will explain how Subhuti said, Please do, sir, we are all listening. The Buddha said all bodhisattvas who sincerely treat control their minds by focusing on one thought only. When I attain enlightenment, I will liberate all sentient beings in every realm of the universe and allow them to pass into the eternal peace of nirvana. And yet when vast, uncountable, unthinkable myriads of beings have been liberated in reality, no being has been liberated. Why? Because no one who is a true bodhisattva entertains such concepts as self and other. Thus in reality there is no self to attain enlightenment and no sentient beings to be liberated. The Buddha said furthermore, Subhuti, when act generously, they shouldn't attach to the concept that they are acting generously. This is called acting generously while not attaching to form and acting generously while not attaching to sight, sounds, smell, taste, touch, or concepts of bodhisattvas act generously without attention to concepts of generosity. Their merit will be incalculable. Something Subhuti, the space to the east is incalculable, isn't it? Yes sir, it is indeed good Subhuti, and isn't it the same in any direction of the universe? Isn't space in any direction incalculable, sir, that is correct. The Buddha said Subhuti, equally incalculable is the merit attained by who act generously without attaching to the concept that they are acting generously. If bodhisattvas focus on this teaching with one point of concentration, they will understand what is essential. Subhuti said, sir, will there always be mature people who upon hearing these words gain a clear insight into the truth? The Buddha said, of course there will be. And thousands of years from now there will be many people who penetrate into the truth just by hearing these words and contemplating them. People like this, though they may not be aware of it, having cultivated mental clarity as students of only one Buddha, they have cultivated Clarity as students of hundreds of thousands of Buddhas When they hear these words and contemplate them They will see reality in a single moment clearly Just as it is the Buddha fully knows and appreciates these people As they wake up to their true nature How do they do this? Clearly these people never again attach to the concept self and other Nor do they attach to the concepts truth and non-truth If their minds attach to concepts of separate things They will attach to the concept self and other If they deny the existence of things They will still be attaching to the concept self and other So you should not attach to concepts of separate things And you should not the denial of separate things That is why I tell people my teaching is like a raft A raft is meant to carry you across the river once you have crossed the river you leave the raft behind on the shore if even correct teachings must be left behind how much more so incorrect teachings
wouldn't the merit gain by this person be great? Sabuti said, extremely great, sir. But though this merit is great, there is no substance to it. It is only called great. The Buddha said, yes. Nevertheless, if an open-minded person upon hearing this sutra could truly realize what it is teaching and then embody it and live it, this person's merit would be even greater. All the Buddhas and all their teachings about enlightenment spring forth from what this sutra teaches. And yet, Sabuti, there is no teaching. The Buddha said, Sabuti, if each of the grains of sand in the Ganges River, Ganges River, wouldn't the number of grains of sand in all those Ganges Rivers be uncountable? Sabuti said, yes, sir, if the number of Ganges rivers were themselves uncountable, how much more so their grains of sand? Now tell me this, if a good man or woman filled worlds as many as the grains of sand in all those Ganges rivers with treasure and gave it all away to support causes, wouldn't the merit gained by this person be great? It would be immeasurably great, sir. The Buddha said, I assure you, Sabuti, if an open-minded person upon hearing this sutra could truly realize what it is teaching and then embody it and live it, this person's merit would be far greater. Furthermore, Sabuti, if an open-minded person upon hearing this sutra could truly realize what it is teaching and then embody it and live it, that person would become I'm a Buddha worthy of the deepest respect from all beings in the universe. Even one glimpse of insight is worthy of respect. How much worthier is a life fully transformed by insight and lived in perfect clarity wherever this sutra is. Lived the Buddha is also present. Then Sabuti said, sir, what should we call this sutra and how should we embody it and live it? The Buddha said this sutra is called the diamond cutter transcendent wisdom scripture because it can cut through any form of ignorance or delusion you should embody it and live it with this name in mind the buddha said yes sabuti exactly so if someone and isn't frightened or upset by its teaching that person is indeed extraordinary the only thing bodhisattvas need to do is to free themselves from all concepts and nurture the aspiration for freedom they shouldn't allow the mind to dwell on concepts that arise from anything they can perceive from sight sound smell taste touch or any other should be kept independent of any thoughts that arise within it if the mind depends upon anything has no sure refuge, Sabuti, when bodhisattvas want to practice generosity for the benefit of all sentient beings, they should realize that generosity isn't in fact generosity. And that sentient beings aren't sentient beings. When bodhisattvas realize this, they will be able to practice generosity for the benefit of all sentient beings. You should understand that what I teach is true, it is authentic, and it points to the way things are. There is nothing wishful or inaccurate accurate about this teaching you should further understand that the truth i have attained is neither true nor false bodhisattvas practice generosity while attaching to concepts they are like people walking in total darkness if bodhisattvas practice generosity and are free of concepts they are like people walking in the sunlight with their eyes wide open seeing all things clearly exactly as they are if in future ages open-minded men and women hear this sutra Realize what it is teaching and then embody it and live it. I will be fully aware of these people and will recognize each one of them and each will be worthy of the deepest respect. greater is the merit of 
someone who wholeheartedly embodies this sutra and lives it, we can summarize it like this. The sutra has inconceivable, inestimable, limitless value. Teaches it to those who are mature enough to understand, those who are able to realize what it is teaching, and then embody it and live it. Stand in the same place as the Buddha and take the Buddha's enlightenment wherever they go. They are worthy of the deepest respect from all beings in the universe. The Buddha said, Furthermore, Sabuti, if good men and women who hear the sutra truly realize teaching and then embody it and live it, nothing in the world will be able upset them enemies may slander them friends may turn cold and leave them but on all occasions their minds will remain undisturbed because they no longer entertain the concept self and other they can't take anything personally thus their minds are free billions of eons ago before the time of the buddha deep Ankara, i served 84 000 millions of billions of buddhas them with wholehearted devotion but if thousands of years from now someone hears the sutra and truly realizes what it is teaching and then embodies it and lives it that person's merit will be a hundred billion times greater than the merit i gained when i served all those buddhas in fact no number could express how much greater his or her merit would be if i were to be accurate merit gained by good men and women thousands of years from now who hear this sutra and truly realize what it is teaching and then embody it and live it no one would believe me you should know that the value of this sutra is beyond conception and that its rewards are beyond conception then you again sir when sincere men and women seek enlightenment what should they do and how should they control their minds the buddha said sincere men and women who seek the truth should control their minds by focusing on one thought only when i attain perfect wisdom i will liberate all sentient beings and allow them to pass into the peace of nirvana and yet when vast uncountable unthinkable myriads of beings have been liberated in reality no being has been liberated why because no one who is a true bodhisattva entertains such concepts as self and other if a bodhisattva says i will liberate all sentient beings then he or she isn't a true bodhisattva in reality there is no separate being that can be called a bodhisattva there is nothing in the universe in which you can find a self so if a bodhisattva says i will make the world into a beautiful place he or she isn't a true bodhisattva in reality there is no separate world to make into anything only when a realizes that there is no self and no other does the buddha call that person a true bodhisattva the buddha said if each of the grains of sand in the ganges river were its own ganges river and there were a world for each grain of sand in all these ganges rivers would these worlds be many very many sir the buddha said however many beings there are in all these worlds of buddhi the buddha knows function and he knows the quality of their thoughts but mind is not in fact mind it is only called mind why is that because past mind is ungraspable future mind is ungraspable and present mind is ungraspable
that's why it is called enlightened when someone who doesn't believe the concept self and other acts in a selfless way that person is able to embody and live the state of enlightenment the buddha said if someone filled a billion worlds with inconceivable wealth piled up as high as mount sumeru and then gave it all away in support of charitable causes the merit gained by this person would be incomparably less than the merit of someone who upon realizing what is taught in this sutra wholeheartedly embodied it and lived it and explained it to others Someone who is able to embody and live this truth would be hundreds of thousands of millions of billions of times greater. In fact, no number could express how much greater it would be. The Buddha said, Sabuti, the Buddha doesn't entertain the thought I will liberate all sentient beings. Why? Because not even one being exists for the Buddha to liberate. If there were beings for the Buddha to it would mean that the Buddha believes the concept self and other though the Buddha says I in reality there is no I yet immature beings take this to be an I and for the Buddha there are no immature beings they are only called immature beings the Buddha said Sabuti to call something a material object is just a conventional way of speaking only beings attached to such terms the Buddha said Sabuti if someone claims that I teach the concept of self and other would would you say that that person has understood my teaching? Sabuti said, no sir, that person has clearly not understood the Buddha's teaching. What the Buddha has explained as the concept of self and other isn't in fact a concept of self and other. Concept of self and other, the Buddha said, Sabuti, all those who aspire to attain enlightenment should be firm in their understanding that all things are without a trace of self or other. There is no such thing as a self or an other, and there is no such thing as a concept. A concept is only called a concept, the Buddha said, Sabuti. One hand, there was someone who filled worlds as infinite as space with inconceivable wealth and then gave it all away in support of charitable causes. And on the other hand, there were a good man or woman who, upon realizing what is taught in the sutra, wholeheartedly embodied it and lived it and explained it to others. The second person's merit would far exceed the first. And what is the essential truth that that person has realized? Simply this, that the world is not what we name it or think it, and that there is no such thing as a self or an other. Listen now to this verse. star at dawn of a bull in a stream a flash of lightning in a summer cloud a flickering lamp After the Buddha had finished.
finished speaking, the monk Sabuti and all the other monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen who had been listening were filled with confidence and joy, and they vowed to take these teachings to heart and put them into practice.